everyone, and it's me, Bleat. We'll go with Bleat for this. And this video's been a long time coming. Um, I'm going to show, like, the basic everything of RPG Maker 2003. Why 2003? Because Yuma Nikki fan game makers tend to prefer 2003 and 2000, mainly, mainly, the, the Japanese game makers prefer 2000, just because, um, Kikiyama made his in 2000, but, made, made Yume Nikki in 2000, but 2003 is a bit better in some regards, and it's, um, I don't know, it's just like a comment, like most everyone uses 2003, and it can be kind of difficult figuring out what it is and everything. Anyway, after you install it, it should go to your C drive or wherever you choose to install it. And uh, this is just the general look of the folder. You don't need to worry about any of this crap. <sighs> What's really important is, um, okay. First of all, when you're making a game, a fan game specifically, you need to know what files you're allowed to keep and what files you can get rid of and everything. So, okay, so this is the RTP. This is basically your building blocks. Not your building blocks as in you're going to use this file, but this is everything you would ever need to use in RPG Maker. It's packaged with it. Um, most of these things are different animations you can use and all that stuff, but the main point is that what's in this folder, you don't need nearly as many of these folders as you think you do. So let's open up, um, we'll use the looking glass just because everyone knows it. And here's the difference. You can delete Battle 2 and battle char set and battle weapon. You won't need these if you're just making a generic Yuma Nikki fan game and you don't plan on using the the standard role playing game RPG fight screen, you know, battle screen where you choose the turns and everything like that and your little characters are animated and you're fighting, you know. You don't have to use any of this for it. Um, you want to keep char set, chip set, and face set. You can get rid of frame. I've never seen it used for anything and there's nothing in it anyway. Maybe it's just my version. Um, you don't even need a game over screen. You don't even need this. Like, if you're planning on making your game have a game over segment, you could use this or you could do something simpler. I don't know. You don't need monster, you don't need movie. You do need music, panorama, picture, sound, system, system 2, and title. Now, in each one, battle, battle is specific animations that you can overlay either in a battle screen or on in the main world, like, you know, when Madotsky's walking around and she turn she <laughs> equips an effect and it plays a little cute animation while she equips it. This is what you'll need your battle folder for. And as you can see, I have all of, it's all in, you all have to make an animation to go with it. Usually something that rotates is good. Some other people use, I've seen other fan games use some of the RTP, which is free to use. I've seen some peop some fan game makers use these things instead. It's all personal preference. I made this just because I thought it was cool. I don't know if I'm going to keep it, but yeah. Anyway, you'll need battle. And you should be able to just Google um, RPG Maker 2003 battle template or battle animation template and you'll be fine with that. Next is char set. 
Now, in this char set, it's all just basic stuff. Some people like to keep this stuff just as testing and everything like that. But I just delete everything, and I have so much crap in here. But anyway, the important thing about char set is that you keep vehicle. Vehicle is really important. Even though you don't use it, you'll never have to use it. Your game will not operate if you don't have this image in your char set folder, specifically named vehicle. So keep that in mind. If your RPG maker for some reason doesn't have it, I can put up a link. I'll probably put, it's probably down there right now, um, to this where you can just download it, rename it to vehicle, and place it in your game's char set folder. On to chipset. Chipset is where you keep um, the pieces of your maps. Not, it's, it's like putting together the environment for these games is like piecing together a puzzle, basically. And this is what your chipset is. This template is very popular for um, Japanese makers, and I just like it because it's simple, and I understand it. Some people might not, but it's very simple, and you can focus more on what you're creating. So we'll talk about chipsets later, but this is where you keep all of your environmental areas, and they're all separated into different things. Face set. Face set is basically... You know in RPG Maker, or in RPGs, whenever characters talk, like they have little portraits that show up. These portraits are gone awful, but anyway. You know, they show up. Well, this is what you'll want for face set. In this, I made the face set just a display of Irene, and it changes depending on what she's wearing. And etc. So, you can probably find templates for all these online easily. But that's what face set is, and that's what it's for. If you you need to have a face set in you need to have like a face set in your folders, but you don't um you don't need to actually some fan game makers don't even put little these little things. They just leave it a blank space, you know, but just do whatever. <laughs> Anyway, now we're moving on to music. The RGP actually has some pretty good music, and I never realized it because I never really listened to it because I just figured it would have been old school, kind of lame RPG music. But there is some pretty good stuff in here that I plan on like dissecting and ripping apart and putting back together later for various things. You don't need a music folder. You don't even need music in your game. But it's nice to have it as background and to keep people's interest going and to put them in a mood. Music is very important, I think, but I can't make it, <laughs> so it's kind of hard. <laughs> but you don't necessarily need it. Anyway, we're moving on to panorama. Panorama is what displays in Yume Nikki whenever you're walking around. Underneath you, there's those moving displays. That's what panorama is. It's usually, in the RPG Maker, it's displayed as like a sky or something. But for us, we use it as sky, we use it as background. For me, I use it for um, Irene's computer, her desktop and everything. You can use panorama for a lot of things. But basically, so you can use it for computer backgrounds. You can use it for sky, um, for the ground, you can use it for like, you know, a city, like the city and everything like that. You can also use it if you don't want to make a chipset, because chipsets is like piecing things together. If you don't want to make a chipset, you can also draw an area and make that the panorama. This is the infamous squiddle. Um, room from the game. You can also do other things like 
display various panoramas and have them fade in and out and move and everything. There's a lot you can do. But basically, it's sky and ground. And you don't always need panoramas, but it's kind of a staple of Yumeniki. Next is picture. Picture, this one, it's very, in the RPG Maker, picture would probably be if you wanted to display, like, an image of an item that a player picks up or, like, a book that they're reading, you would use a picture. For fan games, every fan game maker uses pictures in some way, including um, Kikiyama. We use pictures for, like, everything under the sun that we can think of, everything we need, especially those of us that are getting into the talk sprite <laughs> trend, which is why all these people are here. But you use... You can use pictures for a number of things, a multitude of things, like this is a character in the game that you can run into that is like just a giant like environmental thing. This is your effect box where, you know, in Yuminiki it pops up a little box. You need to have a picture of your box in order for it to pop up and look like it's a Yuminiki thing. Not all fan games do it, but a lot of fan games like it. Um, you can animate these things. Not the greatest thing. You can use fog. You can make something and overlay it, and it will be fog. Here's the frame from the Game Boy world. Like, you can do so much. Here's the instructions, you know. Um, like, this is Irene's flashlight that I made and everything. So, like, you can just do so much stuff with it. Sometimes you don't even need to animate stuff, but pictures are very important. And if you use pictures in your game, it'll look really neat. It'll really catch people's eye when you have these things in here because go it, it goes beyond chipsets and it goes beyond sprites and it makes something really pop out and makes it really interesting and shows people that you've put a lot of work into your game. <clears throat> Moving on, sound... Sound is where you keep, obviously, all your sounds. You can also keep, like, music in here if you want. But mainly, it's just to separate music from certain sound effects that can play. RPG Maker actually does have a good list of sounds that I needed to dissect and everything like that. So, before you go looking for your own sounds for your game, look at the RTP. And look through these things and figure out maybe there is something in here you can use because you would be surprised at <laughs> the amount of useful things that are actually in the RTP. And that was my first mistake. I thought I always had to make everything by myself and I didn't think the RTP had anything I wanted. And I was wrong. The RTP actually has a lot of cool stuff you can use for your game. And you don't have to worry about being called a copycat or anything because it's from the RTP. <laughs> anyway... Moving on to system. System is basically the menu display. The basic one looks really crappy. Nobody likes it. I don't think even the people that make RT, like RPG games that aren't human Nikki like it at all. So what you can do is you can make your own display and you can do all sorts of different things. And it's just something you can use to spice up your game. You don't have to use a specific system display, but it's there. And it's kind of fun anyway. But you need to have at least one system in your folder. At least one system. Because if you don't have a system, the game won't play. Next is System 2. We never use System 2 for anything. This is for when you're doing the battle screens and you're choosing and selecting a character to fight and it displays all this stuff and everything. We never use it, but the game needs it. So you need to include the System 2 folder and these inside it. You need to. Even though you never use it ever, you need to have it in there. And last is the title. You need to have a title screen. The game won't play if you don't have a title screen. It's very simple. The title, it's the same as a picture, except it's the title. Game won't play if you don't have it because it's like 
what do I use to display a title? And it won't look in your picture folder or your panorama folder. You need to put something in the title folder. <clears throat> so that is basically like what you will need for your games. And it's also good to keep like update logs, um, read me. If you are collaborating, keep a planning thing so you can like keep like some sort of thing where you can like keep track of progress so it's easier for other people to read it and be like, oh, I'll do this to it and I'll do this to it. Keep note of any bug fix bugs that you have and any fixes that you have too. And most importantly, when you're done doing all this and you're done testing it, delete your saves. <laughs> because you don't want people starting off with everything. <laughs> They might want to, but you don't want them to. So make sure you delete your saves once you're done with everything. But otherwise, that's your basic necessities for just the folder part. Just the folder and the images and all that stuff. That's your basic stuff that you will need to make a Yuminiki game. Uh, in the next video, we'll probably go over what to do, like some basic things in the maker, um, why making it, making a human Nikki game is different than making um, a normal RPG, and then maybe I'll go on and talk about, I don't know, um, specific things, or maybe I'll explain some mechanics that I used in my game that I'll be glad to share with you guys. But um, that's it for now, so I hope you enjoyed me blabbing on for about 18 minutes and everything. Um, bye!